it's MSF console to make them for you. Um, it has a whole bunch. Let me just grab for, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Okay. It has a whole bunch of different payloads, you see? You just come in here and you, whichever one is gonna work for you, once again, you gotta do your research. You gotta know who you're attacking and what you're doing. So whichever one is gonna work for you, you pick it. We used one of these boys. It wasn't this one. We used a interpreter shell. It looked just like her, but that's not her. So let me go ahead and set up my back door. I already created the malware. We have our protocol analyzer listening. I'm gonna set up my back door and use multi-handler. Multi-handler is the back door. It's going to handle, <laughs> handle that back door coming over so i'm going to set my l hose one and two just like we did in the payload i got to do it here two, eight. <laughs> what'd you say <laughs> they gotta handle that back door. <laughs> you gotta handle it man i gotta set the payload too um what was it again windows x64 interpreter um I'm gonna tell you something about Meterpreter. Meterpreter does a whole bunch of cool stuff, like the key logging and taking, I can literally take a screenshot of your computer, of your desktop and save it on my computer. Um, I might show you guys if we have time. But the thing about it, this isn't gonna work on a lot of systems. Um, so you have to know how to, to, it's good to know how to compromise people without automation because a lot of these automated tools are not gonna work on in the real world. Um, it may work on your computer because you probably don't even update a, a damn thing. I don't even know if you've ever logged into your router before. Most people haven't. They don't know that they can. So, Meterpret is definitely going to work on your computer. I can guarantee it. Um, so, that means update your computer, y'all. So, we got our options running. I'm going to run this. So, now our back door is listening for any connection coming to us, 192.168.1.208, using this port. We created the malware. We learned how we can easily use Microsoft Word to hide the malicious malware, a malicious link pointing to our malware, our payload. And we transferred the payload over to the Windows machine. So now we're listening. Um, TCP dump is listening so we can see all connections coming through, but I just feel like I'm forgetting something that I wanted to show y'all. I just, it's going to blow me when I figure it out. <sighs> all right. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this malware. I know I'm forgetting something. It's blowing me. Whoa. Look at that. Yeah. I saw that, man. You saw the, the, well, first of all, we got this shell right here. Um, this is a shell. This is our back door. It's a shell. Uh, think of a shell as a, it's, it's, it's the translator. You know, when you have, if there's a language barrier between you and somebody else, you need a translator. Um, the shell is a translator. You can look at it like that. I mean, it's translating the commands that we give it to something that the computer understands. So we have a interpreter shell. This is a special kind of shell. Uh, let me see something. Help. Okay. Just to prove that we are on the Windows system, you see, this is our username right here, the student. Our username is student. That's the user I've logged into this computer as, student. Okay. Now I'm going to do, well, who am I is not going to work right here. Let's do, well. Before I even do that, you see this network analyzer? It's going crazy. I mean, crazy, right? Because we logged into the machine and all this traffic is simply just us. I mean, we didn't even do anything yet, bro. Like, that's the crazy part about it. Now, watch this. I want to show you something. I'm going to cut that out. Let's see if it'll work here. TCP down to I zero that VX uh 
much this. Dang, it might be too much track. It's some interpreter show. Um, LS. Yeah, damn it. I knew it. It's going to be too much. I'm trying to just show you the command that we run. Uh, yeah, it's too much traffic. But let me show you. You can see that this is the student. This is us right here. This malware started out as a virus, right? Because we double clicked it. Now it's a virus that turned into a backdoor a remote access trojan um actually it started out as a as a trojan <laughs> it was a legitimate application at least we thought it was right we double clicked it. it we don't know what happened to it and this is how all trojans work well not all of them we double clicked it and nothing happened we're probably going to double click it again nothing's still going to happen it's just going to set up another back door well not really but it's not going to give you what you want now we have this back door now we have this malware which can also be a keylogger. It can take screenshots. Let me see something. Where's the webcam? No, let's do screenshot. Watch this. <laughs> uh, this is about to be funny. Uh, where did it save it at? Tio Lobby Home. Oh, here it is. Look, look at the screenshot of the desktop we just took. When you scan applications, would it detect the malware? I, I, I would hope so. If you want it to, right? Right now, I don't have the firewall, the antivirus turned on. It's actually off. But this is the screenshot. Here, we'll do another one. Let's put this up. Hey, that was actually a question I had of how antivirus, um, when they do scans, what are they actually looking for? Because not all running malware gets caught. Good question. So let's pull this up to show you. Um, watch this. This is an open source tool. It's called virustotal.com. You can go there just like I'm going there, everybody. Now, I'm going to answer Jason's question first. What's the antivirus looking for? Um, the July, the June class should know this. I'll give you guys a chance to answer before I answer it. But what is, what would your antivirus be looking for when it's trying to block malware? What's one thing it could be looking for? Something that everybody has or every application has. Yes, but let's get technical. A type of code, but what type, what do we call that? We don't call it, it, it is a type of code, but there's a technical term for it that you're going to get quizzed on. Would it be like a executable code? Like yes, but what is, so here, let me, let me help you out. So this is the executable 